come on in, pull up a chair and take a load off because today I'm going to be unboxing and taking a first look at Versailles 1919 from GMT Games. I'll be diving into this brand new political game right after this. Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, I'm Jeff McAleer, back once again as your host here at the Gaming Gang channel. As I mentioned in the open, I am going to be unboxing Versailles 1919 in just a moment. But first, I do want to remind you, if you like this video, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already. And if you do subscribe, ring that notification bell. Because not only will it let you know when I upload videos such as this, I'll also tell you when my live stream, The Daily Dope, airs right here on YouTube Monday through Thursday nights as I bring you the latest in tabletop gaming news. And of course, when you're not watching videos at the Gaming Gang channel, be sure to visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, and a whole lot more. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. All right, we are going to dive on into Versailles 1919 which is from GMT Games. It's designed by Mark Herman and Jeff Engelstein with artwork provided by Donald Hergerty. The game is for two to four players, ages 14 and up. As far as I understand, it plays in around two hours, and it does carry an MSRP of $89. This is available right now. It is out. So let's swing on over to the other camera because here we have Versailles 1990. So I do want to mention this shows that this is the 100th anniversary, obviously enough, this being published in 2020, 1919, that's not really 100 years, but because of the pandemic, production was delayed, that's why it came out this year. This was supposed to actually come out end of last year, so it would have been the 100th anniversary. So let's swing this. On over, let's take a look at the back here. Do want to mention this is not a war game. This is a political game. So the First World War is over. The great powers are meeting in Versailles. And the big four, which is the UK, United States, Italy, and France, are going to kind of decide what the future of the world will bring. And what this system does is it allows you to, to actually have the different players representing one of the big four and trying to get their agendas put forth. And that's how you're going to look to be able to uh, see who is going to be the winner, as far as I know. So I'll read a little bit of what's on the back here. It says Versailles 1919 uses a new card bidding system whereby players place political influence on issues to control how they will be written into the treaty. When you gain control of an issue, you will choose between several options. For example, if the United Kingdom maneuvers their influence to gain control over the Palestine issue, you have a choice of whether to make it independent, a Zionist state, or declare a French or UK mandate, the one chosen historically. As you compete over how the clauses of the treaty will be written, you will experience today's headlines as you discuss Syria, Armenia, Ukraine, Somalia, and Korea, to name but a few, 53 issues, and try to mold the world through the lens of your national agenda. There are also a host of non-geographical issues related to racial equality, reparations, and women's suffrage, as the world struggles with the same complex issues that we still, unfortunately, debate today. This has a bit higher complexity. It's a six, so it's a little high on the medium scale. And it is a nine for solitaire suitability. So it looks as if you could really play this solitaire. Although, strangely enough, where it says players, it says two to four. Usually, a game has really high solitaire suitability. GMT usually marks it with a one player. All right, so... Let's get the shrink wrap off of this, and we're going to dive in and take a peek. So this is a pretty large box. This box also has some good heft to it. 
So I'm going to take a guess that the, the game board is mounted. Let's get this opened on up. So we have a playbook and we have a rule book. So we'll take a look at both of these first. I'm going to move this off to the side as we take a peek at the rules. So let's see what we've got as far as the rules of play. Make sure we've got, uh, got this in focus here. So we've got, looks like we've got 17 pages of rules. Oops. Oh, let's move, let's zoom in a little bit. Let's just zoom on in just a touch. Because I'm zooming out. That's real good, Joe. <laughs> All right. So we'll zoom in so we can get a, a, a better look at the rules here. And once again, just going to make sure that this is in focus here. All right. So we get an introduction. You know, this looks like this is actually a little too bright. Let's see if we can bring this down just a touch. There we go. That way uh, the, the uh, actual print will show up a little bit better. So we get an introduction showing us the components, talking about the number of players, the board locations. It looks like we've got a waiting room. We've got some region tracks, demobilization, national happiness. What uh, looks like what issues are on the table as well. So talking about some of the different counters as well. We've got event cards. So I believe we have issue cards and event cards. So we're talking about influence cubes as well. So we've got the issue. So we're, we're going to take a look at these different cards as well. So we've got set up for a two-player game. It's UK and France. For three player, it's UK, France, US. And for a four player, it's UK, France, US, and Italy. So it's showing a setup for a three player game here. So we got a lot of images as well. I have to say, the team up of Mark Herman and Jeff Engelstein is very interesting. Very interesting uh, team up. And I'm very curious how this game plays. So we're showing different steps. So let's see, what do we have here? So we have uh, step one is resolve issue. Then we got resolve conference event, advance issue and event cards. Add an issue to the waiting room and place event card into waiting room and perform crisis event. Okay. Talking about military actions. Uprising checks and uprisings. So this is not a war game, but there are military aspects that you will deal with as the great nations are negotiating the treaty. So here we get two-player rules, and then we get solitaire rules. And all in all, what was that? 17 pages of rules. And then on the back, looks like we've got a bit of a... Reference. So we've got icon refer references here, turn options, uprising check as well. So this is the rule book. Now the playbook, and I say it all the time whenever I'm taking a look at GMT titles or I'm reviewing GMT titles, I love the playbook. Not only do you normally get a detailed example of play, which I got to be honest, I say this time and time again, I tend to read the playbook before I read the rule book. Because I find if I read the playbook first, then when I'm reading the rule book, things just seem to jive better. They click better. But not only do we get a good example of play, we usually get some cool designer notes. We get like historical commentary as well. I love that. So for an example, we, we know we've got issue cards and event cards I'm going to take a guess. Like I, You just saw me take the shrink wrap off, so I don't know what's in this book. But I'm going to take a guess. We might actually get a section that tells us what each of those event and issue cards actually represent. And I love that. I always think that's very cool. So here is a comprehensive example of play with four players. I'm breaking through. Just going through the different rounds. Get to round 10. 
round 11. So 12 and 13. Here we go. And then we get final scoring. And it looks like the United States came through with the win. Showing uh, the different uh, scoring for the UK, US, Italy, and France. And we get a comprehensive example of play for Solitaire. I like that. Or Sauron goes to Paris. That's kind of funny. Okay. Maybe we won't get it, uh, the examples of what these cards represent. Oh, here, here we go. Okay. Ah, see, I spoke too soon. So we got, here's our historical commentary on the issue cards. All right, so we got uh, commentary on the issue cards, but not the event cards. And we got some design notes here. So we get design notes from both Jeff and Mark. Very cool. And we get the solitaire player aid right here on the back. But I do see as I reach on into the box, we also have a player aid right here for the solitaire player. So that's one side right there. We do have a punch board with some counters as well. These are dual sided. So I see we have naval. So we've got naval for the US and Great Britain. I don't see anything for France or Italy. So we've got contain. It says German here. Almost looks like it's maybe the German economy, industry, anti communism. That's got to be what that represents. So we got player victory points, empire. Let's flip this on over. Looks like they are the same on both sides. Nice. Might be unionized labor, or labor unrest. I don't know. Cool. Then it, we've got uh, a scoring pad. Well, that's kind of cool. They have a scoring pad, dual-sided. So for the UK, the US, Italy, and France. So as far as the scoring goes, it looks like we have controlled issues, strategy token, strategy card total, and then different conditions it looks like on the strategy card, as well as your national happiness. And that's what determines your victory points. So we do have a mounted board. Let's save that for last. Let's see what else we've got. We know we've got cards. So we've got a six-sided die. We've got a couple of decks of cards. It's actually a, a large size deck of cards. Here we have different cubes and discs that we're going to utilize on the board, no doubt. And of course, I always like the, the cool inserts that we get with the GMT games. It's not just, you know, it's blank. So, of course, this is the cover of the game box, obviously enough, in black and white. So we do have some cubes in four different colors. So we'll put those back in there. So let's take a look to see what we've got. As far as these decks of cards, actually, you know what? We'll save that because then we'll zoom in on those decks of cards. Let's take a look at the mounted board here. And I'm always really careful trying to take these boards out because it's just too easy to catch one of the corners on the Ziploc. Okay, so let's see what we've got. So this is... Uh, Pretty good size board here. So let's try to look at different sections of it. So here we've got a region track. So deploy Europe, Balkans, Mideast, 
Africa, Pacific. So we've got this area up here. Then down here, we've got Demobilize. Here's our end game happiness bonus. Exhausted influence and military. This looks like this is the push this up a little further. Looks like this is the I believe this is the happiness track that you utilize too on this. Looks like this is a track you might be using for for different things. Because we're showing different numbers of military points here. And then we're going from zero. Well, there's actually a negative five. Well, we've got zero to 25 there. So we've got that. Let me grab a quick sip here. So that's that side of the board. Then we move over to this side. And this is where we're going to have the current, current events as well as the waiting room. So here we have the issue draw deck, issue discards, the waiting room. So I guess there's only a waiting room if you're playing two to four players. We have the event draw deck. So it looks like we've got some crises down here. So right in there. We've got a section uh, here for the active player. And then we have a conference area where we will have, I believe these are where the, the active issues are going to be in place. All right, so that is the board. Very cool, very interesting looking game board, I have to say. Also want to mention that uh, Pinky and Smokey, the two cats, are down here in the Duct Tape Studios. And of course, Pinky is in fine form. All right, so we got the uh, six-sided die. All right, so we're gonna zoom in. We're gonna take a closer look at these cards here. Oh, <laughs> all right, that's zoomed in a little too close. There we go. All right, and. All right, why is this focus not kicking in here? Not for crying out loud. I think because I bumped this. Now I have to. Now I have to utilize that as our focus. See? Yeah, I think that's what, what the problem was. Because I, I bumped the little uh, the focus ring. So that uh, turned off the autofocus. All right, let's open these cards up here. Open these decks up. We'll take a look to see what we've got. So first off, these are the issues. All right, come on. I swear, I think this, <laughs> my hobby knife is starting to get pretty dull. Oh, we will get these. So these, these are the events, right? like we might have a few different kinds of cards here all right so let's look at these events so here we have active player well that's cool I, that's i like that <laughs> it's waterman's fountain pens that's very cool okay so we've got strategy so we've got some strategy cards which i believe each of the nations each of the uh the big four we're going to have a strategy card, and then it looks like the rest are events. Yep. Okay. So let's see what we got these strategy cards. Contain communism. Reparations. Revanchism. I'm not sure what that is. It says aggressive policies expand and recover lost territory. Position held by uh, British and Italians. 14 points. Well, there we know. That's that's U.S. That is Woodrow Wilson. Nation building. Global trade. Mobilization. So it looks like you're getting victory points for 
specific aspects here. That that's my guess. Isolationism. Well, that would, that would actually end up becoming the United States again. Outlawing war and regional competition. So those are the strategy cards. Let's take a look at the event cards. So we have unrest. So we have different uprising checks. A few of these. Actually, quite a few of these. So it's telling us what areas we have to check for unrest. So we've got the Middle East. We had the Pacific. Wow, there's a lot of unrest cards here. But they're a little different. So, for example, you recover an exhausted influence for each Bolshevik strategy token on a settled issue. Are these all unrest? <laughs> I swear they might be. Herbert Hoover, Ho Chi Minh, who, uh, who actually went to uh, Versailles to, uh, to try to get Vietnamese independence. And I don't even think they sat down to meet with him. And that was pretty much all the time that Ho Chi Minh ended up having for the allies there. Yeah, it looks like, there we go, quite a few up, up unrest. I almost said uprest. So we got some speech cards. John Foster Dulles. Vladimir Lenin scandal cards. We get some scandal cards. Got some famine cards. Civil War. It's pretty interesting. So we've got rebellion. Strikes. Here's Prince Faisal. Natural Disaster, Rights March. Are we going to have a Rights March for Women's Suffrage? Let's find out. Oh, well, we got the Suffragettes. Relief Efforts. There's T.E. Lawrence, Lawrence of Arabia. Other Relief Efforts. Con uh, gossip. Military Maneuvers. There we go. So that is the deck of events that are going to come into play. And then here are the issues. It looks like these are dual sign. Oh, no, maybe not. This, these are player aids. That's cool. So we get the turn options and uprising check. sure these are all issues yeah they're all issues here kind of surprised that the the players don't get a little player aid outside the one on the back of the rule book that uh, explains what the icons represent see we just have the uprising check and turn options all right so let's see issues so oh the game end <laughs> game's over all right we're done Uh, widow pensions, rebuilding, indemnities. Huh. Um, kind of curious what these represent because it's like no, yes, Vietnam, New Guinea and Samoa, Shantung, Korea. League voting, Arabia. So then it's basically, so I guess if you control the issue, you get to make your choice out of these. So for an example, uh, independence, UK man mandate, French mandate. So here we have Syria, racial equality, Middle East. German membership in the League of Nations, labor reform. I think the League represents League of Nations. I'm not sure. 
women's suffragists. There we go. Palestine, Kurdistan, Salika, Armenia, Somalia, Germany, East Africa, Ethiopia. So just kind of flipping through these, kind of show these off a little bit. I would, I'm taking a stab. Once again, I, you know, I have not read through the rules or anything, but I would take a guess that uh, if you control the issue and you make your choice, uh, then this is what you end up scoring. That'd be my guess. So there are, I think they, I think it was 53 issue cards. Anschluss, Slovenia and Croatia, German trade, inter ally debt, disarmament, cool, the Sudetenland, high seas fleet, Prussia, and finally the Rhineland. So those are all of the issue cards for us right there. All right, so. We've got, let me grab all this stuff together. So we have the tokens, the different cubes and discs. We have the issue cards, as well as the event cards and strategy cards. Or our player aids, put those back in there. And a six sided die. We have a pretty cool looking game board, as well as our scoring pad. Let's zoom back out, see what we got here. See if this will <laughs> focus back in for us. Whoops, zoomed a little too far out. All right, so we've got the scoring pad, we've got a counter sheet, we've got a solitaire player aid. We've got the playbook, which looks pretty interesting, as well as the rules of play. And that is what we find when we take everything from Versailles 1919 outside the box. Let me swing back over to the other camera and we will wrap up. All right, so there is a, a first look at Versailles 1919 from GMT Games. And, of course, I will have a review of this as soon as possible. I have to point out, I think everybody knows right now that with the pandemic going on, it's a little tougher to get uh, four people together to play games. So we are we're doing it from time to time, but not as often as, uh, of course, pre-pandemic. Anyway, as I mentioned, this is available right now from GMT Games. It does carry an MSRP of $89. As I mentioned when I talk about any of the GMT game releases, if you have any interest in Versailles 1919, snag it now. Don't wait, because GMT Games doesn't have huge print runs of their titles, and you don't want to get stuck having to either pay top dollar on the secondary market or wait a couple of years or more for a new print run. So once again, Versailles 1919 is available right now. If you like this video, by all means, please give it a quick thumbs up. Subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel if you haven't already and ring that notification bell because it will not only let you know when I upload videos such as this, It'll also tell you when my live stream, The Daily Dope, airs Monday through Thursdays right here on YouTube as I bring you the latest in tabletop gaming news. All right, that is it for this time out. So until I see you next, as I've been wrapping up all my videos during this pandemic, unfortunately, here's hoping that you be smart and stay safe.
Oh, you're still here. Well, once again, thank you very much for watching this video. And of course, if you'd like to subscribe to the Gaming Gang channel, click right here. And of course, if you want to see one of the latest episodes of the Daily Dope, click right on up here. And if you want to roll the dice, take your chances, see what YouTube thinks you might like from the channel, give a click right here. Once again, I'm Jeff McAleer, and I'll see you next time.